Here's a question for you. How do you increase the concentration of a solution without adding more solute? Let's say if you wanted to increase the concentration of a saline solution, how do you do that without adding more salt? The way to do that is evaporation by removing the solvent, in this case water. As water evaporates, the concentration of the saline solution will increase. And in this video, we're going to talk about how to calculate the concentration of the new solution after water has evaporated and other similar variations of this type of problem. But let's start with this problem. A 600 milliliter 15% saline solution lost 400 milliliters of water by evaporation. What is the new concentration of the solution? Now, it really helps to draw a picture. So originally, we had 600 milliliters. Let me draw a bigger picture. So we had 600 milliliters of fluid and the concentration of the solution was 15%. Now after evaporation, we're going to lose water. So after evaporation, we lost 400 milliliters of water. If we lost 400 milliliters of water, how much water do we have left over? Or how much solution, rather, do we have left over? The new volume of the solution is going to be 200 milliliters. Now, what's going to be the concentration? Notice that the volume, it decreased by a factor of 3. If we go from 600 to 200, we need to divide 600 by 3 to get to 200. What that means is that the concentration is going to increase by a factor of 3. So if we multiply 15% by 3, the concentration of the new solution is 45%. And that's always going to happen with evaporation. Evaporation is a process that will increase the concentration of the solution by the removal of the solvent. Now, there's a formula that you could use to get the answer, and here it is. M1V1 is equal to M2V2. V is the volume, M is the molarity or the concentration of the solution. The concentration doesn't have to always be represented in molarity. You could represent it in terms of molality or as a percentage. In this case, it's a percentage. So M1 is going to be 15%, V1 is 600 milliliters, M2 is what we're looking for, and V2 is 200 milliliters. So if we divide both sides by 200 milliliters, we can see the unit milliliters will cancel. We'll get 15% and 600 divided by 200, we could cancel the two zeros, so it becomes 6 divided by 2, which is 3. So it's simply 15% times 3, which is 45%. So that is the new concentration of the solution, and we could see that it increases by a factor of 3. Now, let's move on to the next problem. By the way, if you want to pause the video and try this question, feel free to do so. An 8% sucrose solution lost 300 ounces of water by evaporation. What is the concentration of the sucrose solution if there's 100 ounces of volume remaining? So keep in mind, there are different forms of volume that we could use. The units of volume can vary. We can have the volume in milliliters. We can have the volume in liters. We could have it in ounces. We could have it in gallons. As long as the unit matches, you can still use the same formula. But let's give a, let's get a visual illustration for this particular problem.
So originally we had 300 ounces of water. And the concentration of the sucrose solution is 8%. Now, after evaporation, we're going to have only 100 ounces left, which means we lost 200 ounces of water through evaporation. 300 minus 200 is 100. What is the concentration of the new sucrose solution? So once again, we're calculating M2. The only difference between this problem and the last problem is the last problem gave us the change how much water we lost. This problem gives us the final volume, which is nice. So using the same formula, M1 times V1 is equal to M2 times V2. So M1, the concentration of the first solution is 8%. V1 is 300 ounces. We want to calculate M2 and V2 is 100 ounces. So we're going to divide both sides by 100 ounces. These will cancel. 300 divided by 100, that's going to be 3. So we get 8% times 3, which is 24%. So that's the new concentration of the solution. And we could see the volume, just like in the last problem, decreased by a factor of 3. It went from 300 to 100, which means the concentration is going to go up by a factor of 3, going from 8% to 24%. So when dealing with solutions, volume and concentration, they're inversely related, or you could say they're inversely proportional. Now let's move on to number 3. How much water must be evaporated? from a 200 milliliter 6% salt solution to create a 30% salt solution. Feel free to try this problem. So let's begin with a picture. So we have a 200 milliliter salt solution and the concentration is 6%. Now we want to evaporate enough water where the concentration is going to change. We want the concentration to go from 6% to 30%. So we want to increase the concentration by a factor of 5. If we want the concentration to go up by a factor of 5, that means we want the volume to go down by a factor of 5. 200 divided by 5 is 40. And we can confirm that with this formula. M1V1 is equal to M2V2. So M1 the concentration of the first solution, we know it's 6%. V1 is 200 milliliters. We have the concentration of the second solution, which is 30%, and we're trying to calculate V2. So we need to divide both sides by 30%. So it's 6 times 200 divided by 30. And that gives us 40. Now what are the units of this answer? Notice that the unit percent cancels, so we're left with milliliters. Therefore this is going to be 40 milliliters, which is what we have. But this is not the final answer, because if we pay attention to the question, we want to know how much water must be evaporated. In other words, we want to calculate the change in volume. So we started with 200, we ended with 40, so the change in volume is the difference between the final volume and the initial volume. 
So 40 minus 200, the change is negative 160. So we need 160 milliliters of water to be evaporated from the original solution so we can create a more concentrated solution that has a concentration of 30%. So we have to lose 160 milliliters of water to go from 200 to 40. So that's how much water that has to be evaporated in order to increase the concentration from 6% to 30%. And that's basically it for this video. So now you know how to answer questions like this and how to calculate the concentration of a new solution after water evaporation.